Hey guys, welcome back to Nat One Videos. So, as well as playing D and D, uh, one of the things that I do is play Skyrim. I love Skyrim. I don't really play any other computer games, to be honest. And today, I'm going to attempt to make the furnace pit from the Riverwood Forge in Skyrim, uh, like you can see on screen right now. So, let's have a go. Recently, I've had a go at this a few times. Um, this is not what exactly what I'm going to make today, but it's kind of based on this. Um, obviously, I'm sure you guys have seen this a hundred times on different crafting channels. That's where I got the basis of the idea for this. And then I was just wondering if I could take a little bit further. It's just going to be on top of a little wooden platform and there's no, not going to be any visible flame on top, but it's going to be glowing embers from underneath. That's the plan. I don't know if I can do it. So this is the basis of the idea though, taking inspiration from other awesome channels. Okay, so obviously I'm going to be using a tea light. Um, I've already cut a little bit out of the tea light just so it makes it easy to pop out this part of the video. Uh, so there we go, got a tea light. And I've got a piece of balsa wood because I want to kind of hide the, this quite bulky piece of tea light. I want to cut a little hole in the balsa wood so that this can pop up through. Um, and then I can build it around that. I'm just going to measure this part. So it's just over a centimeter, or no, just over half an inch. And by just less than an inch. Okay, so you see that I've measured out the where I want to make my little hole for the light to come through and I've made it a little smaller. Um, I don't need it to be too big. Um, and then I am just going to score some little very fine lines like so. These are going to be my timbers. So I've scored my lines, but before I actually make them more pronounced, um, I'm going to glue my wood base to some stock cardboard because balsa wood's very, very flimsy and it'd be easy to just start breaking bits off. So yeah, I am going to glue this to some cardboard. So now that my balsa wood has been reinforced with this stock cardboard on the back, I feel more confident to draw my grooves in, in, in the wood. So I've, I've scored the lines already, but then I'm going to come in at a, a slight angle alongside that groove, and I'm going to pop out these bits of wood like so. So this will be a quick time lapse. Okay, there we go. Now I feel confident to go ahead and cut my little square out where my light is going to come through. So this is going to take a bit of effort because I have reinforced it with card underneath. But I'm feeling confident that the rest isn't going to break, so it was definitely worth it. And there we go, that fits in perfectly. So the next part of the process is I want to build a kind of stone circle to go around it. And I'm gonna use this as the template to cut a circle in some XPS form. Now I just have to cut it out. Okay, it needs a bit of tidying up. That might come in handy for something else at some point. A nice stock or a nice rock or a nice base for something. Okay, we're gonna move forward with that. Next, I'm gonna carve a circle around the edge as well. So 
So we have our little piece of wood platform and we have our little forge that's going to go on top. Uh, so yeah, now I'm just going to carve some lines into this little forge. So in the Skyrim uh, furnace, the top part has got sort of uh, bigger bricks that are more square shaped and then the bottom of it has got lots of little circular stones so that's what I'm going to go for. Okay so now that I've got that top bit on I'm going to carve a little tiny bit more off the bottom part. starting to take shape now it's going to be a bit fiddly to go in with my knife so I've got my barrow pen and I'm going to stick this tea light in the center just so that I can easily press against something and uh, maintain the structure um, now let's do it the other way so I can hold it like this and draw in my rock shapes Okay, there's the base done, and now I'm just going to do the widen the bricks with the pen a little bit. It's really starting to come together, and we have our little wooden base to go inside it. Now, I probably need to actually just go ahead now and hot glue this little base. One other thing that I quite like to do um, is to give it a wooden base. And again, I'm not doing this in massively accurate fashion. I'm just eyeballing everything and making it up as I go along. I want to make them like logs, so this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So whenever they build log cabins, they carve a little bit out here and they carve a little bit out here and they fit them together like so. This is kind of what I'm aiming for. So yeah, you can tell what I'm trying to do. I'm just looking at my battery and it's running out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to carve all of these pieces and then when it's done, I'm going to come back and show you guys. There we go. I have carved those all out and glued that together and it looks well it is very solid so this is going to go on the bottom of my furnace like so but I also think that I'm going to need another layer now that I look at the height of it so I'm going to go ahead and do another layer And there we go. Uh, it's not perfect, but it looks kind of cool. Um, I'm probably going to rough up the edges with the Dremel a little bit to make it look more like uh, a log. Um, so, yeah, we're getting closer. Uh, we have our furnace. We have platform for it. Before I stick this on and make it permanent, I do want to paint the platform and this, and then I will put them together so before I paint this I am going to get my Dremel and I'm going to rough up the wood so that it's more rough first I'm going to use this wire brush kind of tool to chip away at the ends and then I'll make some wood grain Okay, there we go. It's looking quite rough and logish. And now I want to be a bit more deliberate with these inner wood panels, so I'm going to use this diamond bit. Okay, 
Okay, here we go. I'm gonna do some with my diamond bit. I have roughed up my wood and it looks pretty sweet. Um, I can already hear uh, in my head people saying you could just do this with XPS foam. Uh, and yeah, you probably could. I haven't done it this way for any other reason than I just enjoy the process. Um, so yeah, if you think you can come up with a cooler way to do it or an easier way or a quicker way, that's great. Do it that way. As usual, before I paint my dry brushes and stuff I got there, I'm gonna do the black Mod Podge base coat uh, that is pretty standard now. Um, and I'm just gonna do a bit of texturing on this with the tin foil, which is also pretty standard. And I'm gonna put this in here just so I don't break my XPS foam when I'm pressing against it, so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I just want to make sure my gaps are nice and wide. I want these bricks to be nice and pronounced. Okay, uh, I guess I'll do a time lapse of some Mod Podge paint. Here we go. Okay, Mod Podge on both pieces uh, finished, so I'm going to give them both a blow dry and then I will do the dry brushing in both things. So as you can see with the wood, I'm using burnt umber and I will lighten up the burnt umber and use some titanium white to make a lighter highlight base. And we're going to mix up a really nice light brown for these highlights. Maybe not that light though. Let's add a little bit more of the umber. That's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to do too much more to that. I quite like the dark brown just with a little bit of highlights. So let's leave that one there and we'll move on to this. For the stone, I'm just going to do my normal, what I normally do with the stonework, which is graphite grey neutral grey value 5 and then a mix of uh, neutral grey and white for the final highlights. We have our base and we have our stone circle and nothing too complicated about this although I do like this little base, it's nice and it hides the switch quite nicely. I have this piece of plastic which I got from a food packet. I just cut out a circle and I am going to try and glue it uh, at a right at the correct height uh, above the light. Um, and this will be the first part of the process of me trying to get glowing embers coming in here. So I have it in the right place there and I'm just going to go ahead and try and hot glue it in. Now, this hot glue is very hot and it may melt it a bit. We'll see what happens. Okay, there we go. Uh, I'm actually just going to throw that into the fridge real quickly to cool it down. That is now secure and 
it's perfect basically so I can put it on there and obviously when the light turns on there's going to be light shining up through it so what to put on top of it well this is where uh, my good friend Richard Tilbury has come in and helped me out again he is a glass wizard and he had some of this bullseye frit coarse grade glass colored glass and it is literally just the perfect thing <gasps> for coals. Now look at that. I mean, just like that, that is pretty much perfect. I absolutely love it. Now I've just poured it in there really quickly just because I was too excited to have a look and see. It's perfect. I'm going to turn off this light just to see it. Oh yeah. Now that's a real furnace. That's what it looks like to me anyway. So uh, I'm going to need to glue it in there. That glass has been glued in and it's oh, a few little loose bits but it's looking really really good so now i just need to glue this bit on top and then obviously it's probably all a little bit orange so i'm going to do a bit of uh slightly pva-ish black wash in around the edges here just to kind of darken down the edges a bit more so there's more embers in the middle so i'm going to do that all night First we glue it down. Okay, so I'm ready to do my black wash. And I'm going to put it in, just in around these coals at the edge. So that they're a bit darker. And then let's see what the effect of that is. Maybe a little bit more. And then I'm gonna carry on with a black wash uh, over the whole thing. That is the furnace done. Okay, so that is my little furnace forge, Riverwood Skyrim furnace. Um, the only thing is that I think it needs a couple of final little details to really make it look like it's from the Skyrim forge. So if you play the game, you'll notice that often there's a little pair of forceps uh, for grabbing the steel and then usually some steel sticking out um, that's kind of white hot at the ends and kind of red and gradually goes to black. So that's what I'm going to try to make now and that's just a final little detail to make it cool. So let's give it a shot. So for this I'm going to use two little matchsticks to try and make the forceps. And I'm going to use my carving knife. So basically they're going to look something like that except I'm going to carve them to actually look forceps. Hopefully I don't break the matchsticks in the process. So let's give it a try. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the forceps part done, but um, still not quite the right shape. Let's uh, carry on. I want to do a curve in there and a curve on that side as well. Okay, there we go. That is one. Oh, I need to figure out how. Ah, yeah, there we go. One small pair of 
forge forceps. The best way to glue these together would be with a bit of super glue, which I don't have at the minute, or PVA, which takes too long to dry. So usually, as usual with my impatience, I'm going to just do a little bit of hot glue and trim any extra bits. I now have a nice tiny little set of forging forceps. Um, I've added a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I've added a little tiny bead of hot glue there, which is supposed to look like a rivet. And I'm gonna paint those just black. Um, but now I want to create some rods for the furnace. Uh, and I'm just gonna do that with matchsticks again. This one's gonna be much easier. Think about this long. Okay, so four little rods. Okay, so I'm ready to paint my little tools. Um, I'm going to use this hair clip to clamp this like so. Oh, can't paint with a knife. I'm going to do three. So while that's drying, uh, before I do the last part, I'm going to paint these little steel bars so I want them to look white hot at the end then yellow then orange and red and then to black so fading to black if I can get my paint open I will paint them Okay, so they're not quite looking right. Um, they look like some sort of candy or something. I need the, the gradient to be a bit more. So I think I'm gonna do just a bit of an orange, orange wash. Let's try and get an orange wash. Very light. Okay, I think that's as close as I can get it. Um, I'm going to now apply these things. Oh, that looks so cool. Um, no, I think I am going to glue them on. I could have them as a removable prop, but the thing about that is I will probably lose them. And I don't want to lose them, so I am going to glue them on. A little bit of hot glue as usual. Oh, those look great. And then let's turn on the light and see which is the hottest looking part. If we put them in there like that. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, the hot glue is pretty translucent as well, so. It's not going to ruin the look. There we go. My little Riverwood Skyrim Forge furnace. Finished. So there it is, I'm very very happy with my little uh, furnace from the Riverwood Forge in Skyrim. Um, I may at some point build the whole platform and build the leather tannery and stuff like that. But I just wanted to have a go at this because I had the idea for the glass on top. And it basically turned out perfect, it looks exactly how I wanted it to look. So yeah, if you like the video, please give it a like, um, add some comments if you've got any tips that I can make it better. And yeah, 
also please subscribe that'd be really awesome hope to see you guys in the next video thanks bye